hello guys welcome back to the channel uh, here is another update about the backend shell in North Dakota uh, as you know North Dakota is one of the major oil producers in the United States and uh, the oil that's produced from North Dakota is onshore which means it's a uh, within the continental United States on, on land uh, as opposed to offshore where you would have uh, rigs in the ocean. So this is uh, like one of the ports of entry to the back end area. Uh, this is Minot. It is uh, one of the major truck stops. So Minot has an international airport and an airport that is open to uh, with daily flights to Denver in Colorado and also Minneapolis in Minnesota. So many people coming to this area for the first time would land in Minot. Also, uh, there is the town is served by Amtrak. So there's a daily uh, train that runs east to west. Uh, it's called the Empire Builder. It runs all the way to Portland in Oregon and uh, Washington State. So uh, there's two trains every day, one going east to the other going west. So that was just to give you a feel of what the first major truck stop looks like. Uh, this road is uh, heading out west towards the Williston area. Uh, Williston is pretty much like the ground zero of where you have uh, a lot of the uh, oil field activities taking place. So uh, driving on Route 2, this is Highway Highway 2, you kind of get a sense of what kind of traffic you see on the road and that would inform you about uh, if things are picking up or not right now you see there is mostly uh, you know those small box trucks trucks from people around town uh, ranchers farmers in the area and to the right you had some oil field companies uh, but as the oil field activities declined some of them shut down and you see fewer and fewer vehicles in the parking lots so there you had another company you could see the base for the shop area and uh, that would lead to shops heated shops because it's usually very cold here in North Dakota for a long part of the year and this is about 50 miles uh, no about uh, maybe 20 miles from Minot and this is actually in Bethel and you can see some more uh, tanks so when the boom occurred here in uh, 2012 to about 2015 uh, a lot of infrastructure was put in place including some of those tanks that you see and uh, what the tanks actually do is they are hooked up to uh, some well heads and so the oil the whole process gets automated so oil gets pumped from the well heads it gets into pipelines and then the pipelines shove the oil all the way to those uh, holding tanks so when uh, the back end shale was being exploited for the very first time when uh, using the hydraulic fracking process a lot of activity was taking place here uh, a lot of the crude oil was being shipped out in uh, oil tankers and uh, those tankers were were usually uh, on rail cars and uh, whenever there was a derailment or some kind of mishap the the oil will leak out and then there was a tendency for the oil to ignite and uh, people did not like that especially if the crude oil was going into built up areas so with time uh, a very elaborate network of uh, pipelines have been put in place and those safely transport the oil on the ground irrespective of weather conditions and uh, as a bonus it allows the farmers you know to plow their fields and do their work without any interruption from oil field traffic to the left you can see some uh, ngls that is a uh, uh, natural gas liquids so it's uh, tankers 
that hold you know uh, some of the gases that uh, petroleum gases that come from the ground as a byproduct of the drilling and uh, those are compressed and placed in those uh, tankers for transport to market and to the right you just have a, a fertilizer facility North Dakota is a very, very uh, mainly agricultural um, state. On the left, you could see different types of trucks. That's an oil truck going by. There was a sand truck that just went by. Uh, so lots of activities, but things are slow. Uh, in those white plastic wraps, you have uh, grain from last year that could not be transported to the elevators. So they are stored like that in the field. And to the right, you can see another uh, oil train transporting uh, crude oil. Maybe it's empty, maybe it's full. But since it's going out uh, to the west, I would assume that it's full and came from one of the markets on the east. And that's what a typical oil train would look like. Uh, lots and lots of uh, tank cars carrying crude oil. They typically run at a lower speed compared to uh, the Amtrak, for example, or other manifest trains that carry uh, mixed dry goods because the petroleum uh, oil trains, they, I would say they, they, they're carrying hazardous material. That's how you classify the crude oil. Uh, to the left there, you can see tanks, more tanks for storage. And this is about 50 miles from Minot. It's a town called Stanley in North Dakota. And there, uh, in front of your screen, to the left, it's the road that heads to uh, the Fort Bethel Indian Reservation and uh, New Town. To the right, you could see some new construction that was built during the boom. Uh, left you have some equipment implement uh, dealerships and here you start seeing uh, heavy equipment being moved around like the bobcat that was on that uh, hotshot truck to the right you have the gas station and of course uh, there's a Chinese restaurant out here so left you have the case dealership sell tractors and uh, farming implements so let's do a left turn here there is another truck stop here so the truck stops are usually about uh, 30 40 miles apart and uh, a truck stop would be different from a typical gas station in that truck stops would have uh, a shower they have food and uh, for the most part, they have some kind of rewards uh, card that the truck drivers would use to access those services. So they come in, sign up, and then if a shower opens up, then they can go in and shower. And there you have the trucks. Uh, those that are free, their mandatory limit, they have to park for uh, the required reset time uh, according to uh, what is specified by the uh, Department of Transportation, the DOT, and you see a variety of trucks. You have, uh, you saw the FedEx truck and other types of trucks out there. And there you have uh, a propane truck on the right, and then directly in front of you, that is a hot water truck, I believe. So all of these are just servicing the oil field. That's the Diesel Island. There you have a box truck, probably bringing in uh, equipment that's needed out in the oil field. And here they have a truck wash also. Even though the day might look bright, it was very windy. We had a wind, this very powerful wind coming from the northwest and uh, it felt really cold you know if you stay, stayed out in the wind within minutes you start feeling the cold
So here we're going back east. There you have the Flickertail uh, Prairie Village Museum. So it just replicates what houses used to look like back in the day. Uh, you could see the houses were much smaller because uh, in winter you had to keep them warm. And a very big house would have been very costly to store the heating, uh, the wood for heating and also to just to keep it uh, comfortable during winter. So there you have another uh, crude oil truck just pulling up to the light. So like I said, there's quite a bit of activity going on. Um, it's picking up, but not very uh, overtly. It's very, very quietly, but it's picking up for sure. Uh, just around where I live, I saw a couple of uh, walkover rigs, and those are rigs that come to the wellhead to service them, uh, stimulate the well to start producing even more. So a lot of that activity is taking place around uh, this area right now. have uh, some more storage tanks, trucks, oil field trucks. The parking lot is empty, it means that everybody is out working, so <laughs> that's a good sign. So I guess Florida, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the weather out there is maybe in the 80s, 90s right now, but here we are still uh, having cold weather like 30 degrees at night and then during the day about 40 50 degrees so there to the left you have a manifest train uh, manifest meaning a mixture of different types of cars as opposed to a unit train which would be the same commodity in, uh, in the same kind of uh, packaging so the same kind of uh, cars so there you see a manifest train with different type of uh, rail cars have some tankers there you have some flatbeds and then there you have some grain cars you have some piping probably for the oil field more tankers more piping <laughs> and then to the left you had some uh, like shops that were built using the tarp so you had the steel uh, framework underneath and then it gets covered with the white tarp it was built like that, I guess, because it's the f it was the fastest way to construct buildings uh, during the boom. You couldn't hire or keep good labor during that time, because the next guy was always offering a little bit more, a little bit more advantages, time off, which matters to the uh, to some workers. So here uh, we're heading on one of the county roads, and you can see how the roads are maintained out here. Uh, the companies that do the drilling, uh, when they start heading out to the well site, there is a lot of activity. So it raises up a lot of dust and then it tears into the road. And uh, even though the county does a lot to try to try and keep up, they just can't really uh, maintain the roads fast enough. So uh, what they do is they grade the road first, then they uh, dump some water and at times it's mixed with chemi chemicals uh, to bond together the earth that way you don't have uh, dust flying around even when it gets dry so the stuff they put in the in the water that they dump on the road it's uh, it's when it dries up it, it's like concrete so it's very hard so as I drive on here I have to ensure that uh, within the next couple of days I hose down my vehicle to get it off Otherwise, it bonds to your paint and it's very, very, very difficult to take it off. But uh, that's how they, they treat the roads out here. And uh, once it gets dry, you'll be amazed. It's almost like the road is uh, totally paved. And so that works well. Over there to the right, you can see a rig, that's a drilling rig. Uh, at night, it lights up like it's a, it's a space station you have so many lights on there it's 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 amazing it's quite a sight to look at it at night and over to the left another walkover rig the one on the left is the walkover the one on the right i think it's a an actual drilling rig so the one on the left is smaller
and there you guys can see how the county takes care of the roads and that's the same rake I talked about earlier so there's definitely uh, some activity going on thanks for joining me and catch you guys on the next video